Hey everybody, I hope this video finds you well. In today's video, we're going to be moving on to section 4.7 uh, from your textbook. And this will this section will be pretty quick. We're just going to have a quick discussion of sort of representing vectors uh, in different bases and also discussing how to change between one basis and another. Um, to do that, though, we do have one sort of important theorem to prove at the beginning here. Um, this is a sort of uh, probably in some ways the most important thing that we'll discuss in this section. Everything else after this is going to be relatively computational, but this is one important idea that we've sort of uh, used or mentioned beforehand, but we haven't formally proven. So this theorem says that if V is a vector space with bases V1, V2 through Vn, then every vector in V can be written uniquely as a linear combination of V1, V2 through Vn. Now, you might be saying to yourself, what's important about this theorem? I mean, don't we already know that uh, the definition of a basis is that every vector can be written as a linear combination of V1 through Vn? And that is true, right? Uh, part of the definition of being a basis is that the set of vectors must be a spanning set, meaning that every vector in the vector space must be written in, must be able to be written in terms of V1 through Vn. The important idea of this theorem, though, is that the way you do that, the way you can write that linear combination, is unique. So that is something we haven't touched on. It is definitely true, and if you go back over all the sort of previous examples, whenever we've written something in terms of a basis, it's always been unique, but now we're ready to prove that. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to let v1 through vn be a basis for v. Okay, and we're going to let v be an element of v, so some random vector there, okay? Now, let's suppose that v equals c1v1 plus c2v2 plus dot 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 cnvn, and v equals k1v1 plus k2v2 plus dot 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 knvn, right? And this is for c1 through cn, k1 through kn, all elements of whatever our field is. So we're going to suppose that v has two representations. This linear combination here, where you use the constant c1, c2 through cn, and this linear combination here, where you use the constants k1, k2 through kn. What we need to show is if we're going to show that this is a unique representation, we need to show that c1 equals k1, c2 equals k2, all the way down to cn equals kn. In other words, we need to show that every one of these constants is actually identical. All right, so let's go ahead and prove that. So, prove. Well, we have this supposition, right, that the v can be written like this and v can be written like this. So let's go ahead and think about v minus v must be equal to the zero vector, right? Any vector minus itself must be the zero vector. So if we use these representations, what that tells us then is if we combine piece by piece there, right, we'd get something like C1V1 plus C2V2 plus da, 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 CNVN minus K1V1 plus K2V2 plus da, 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 KNVN has to equal zero. So all I'm doing there is I'm saying, okay, for this V, let's represent it in terms of C1 through CN. And for this V, let's represent it through K1 through KN. Now let's match these up individually. So put the V1s together, the V2s together, etc. So that should be C1 minus K1 V1 plus C2 minus K2 V2 plus dot, 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 cn minus kn vn equals zero. Okay, now let's think about this equation though, right? This is a linear combination of v1, v2 through vn equaling the zero vector. But what do we know about v1, v2 through vn? Well, we know v1, v2, vn is a basis. So we know it's a spanning set. We use that to even be able to write V in terms of V1 through Vn, but we also know it must be linearly independent because the second part of being a basis is being linearly independent. So since this is linearly independent, we know that the only solution to this is that all of these constants are zero. So since V1 through Vn is linearly independent, this implies 
That's C1 minus K1 equals zero. C2 minus K2 equals zero. Dot, dot, dot. Cn minus Kn equals zero. Because the definition of linear independence is that the only solution to the linear combination equaling the zero vector is that all the constants must be zero. Well, pretty clear then. That tells us that C1 equals K1, C2 equals K2, all the way down to Cn equals Kn. And there we go. We've proven what we wanted to show, right? That all the constants must be the same. And therefore, these representations are actually the same, which means that every representation is actually unique. So what this means is that when you have a basis, we already know that if you have a basis, that means you can build everything in your vector space out of those vectors. And now we know that when you have a basis, not only can you build everything in your vector space, but you can build it uniquely. Okay. So now we're ready to describe what, how we actually build that and how we can represent the amount that we need from each of our basis elements to build a given vector. So let's go ahead and give some definitions here. So definition. First, just a little sort of side definition. A lot of times in the past we've been doing this, we've just been talking about a basis. Um, there's a concept called an ordered basis. So all this is if we set an order for the vectors in a basis, then we call it an ordered basis. In other words, we're basically saying that the vector we write first is now considered as the first vector. So for everything we're going to be talking about, the order is important. So we're going to be talking about things called ordered bases. Okay, this is the really important definition. So let's suppose that we have a basis v1, v2 through vn, and it's an ordered basis for vector space v. So this guy counts as the first one, this one counts as the second one, this one counts as the last one. So let's let v be some random vector in our vector space. Okay, now we know that there is only one way to write v in terms of a linear combination of v1 through vn. That's the theorem we just proved. So let's let v be c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus dot 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 cn vn, where c1 through cn are those constants, and we're going to call them the components of v relative to basis b. And if we define this column vector, c1, c2, down to cn, this is called the component vector of v relative to basis b. And notice that the way we write it is we write v with brackets around it and then b to represent that we're using this basis. So the important thing here is that this is a column vector where each value in that column vector is the constant that is necessary in this linear combination to build v. Let's immediately use this definition in an example. All right, so for this example, we're gonna be told that both of these sets are bases for P2 of R. Let's see if that's reasonable. Um, notice that each of these sets does have three vectors in it, and we know that the dimension of P2 of R is three. So they're certainly the right size. You guys on your own, if you want, can confirm that these are linearly independent and spanning. Remember that since these have the right amount of vectors, all you would need to do to prove that they are bases is prove either linear independence or spanning, and then the other is automatically true since the number of vectors here matches the dimension. And we're gonna let v be equal to three x squared plus x plus one. And what we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna to try to determine the re representations of this vector in terms of both basis one and basis two. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. So to determine V in terms of B1, what we need to do is we need to set up the equation C1 X squared plus X plus one plus C2 times X squared minus X plus one plus c3 times x squared plus x minus 1 equals 3x squared plus x plus 1. And we need to go ahead and figure out what are the solutions for c1, c2, and c3, because then those will be the actual components of this vector, c1, c2, c3. All right, let's go ahead and do that then. We can build some equations. First, we can build an equation based on the x squareds. So that should be c1 plus c2 plus c3 has to be 3. Then we can build one based on the x's, which looks like it'd be c1 minus c2 plus c3 needs to be 1. And then finally, the constants c1 plus c2 minus c3 needs to be 1. We can put that into an augmented matrix form, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1 minus 1, 1, 1, 
1, 1, minus 1, 1. Okay, we can begin to solve this. We can replace R2 with R2 minus R1 and R3 with R3 minus R1. If we do that, looks like we should get 1, 1, 1, 3. Uh, then we should get 0, minus 2, 0, and minus 2. And then we should get 0, 0, minus 2, minus 2. Okay. Then we can go ahead and, I suppose, do negative 1 half uh, R2 and negative 1 half R3. Though we could probably just back solve at this point, but it, it's nice and easy to just clean that up. 1, 1, 1, 3, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 1, 0. Notice that this has three variables, and we can see that this is going to have rank three, which is why it's going to have a unique solution, which is what we proved at the beginning of this video, that it's always going to have a unique solution. Oh, and sorry, I made a little mistake there. This guy right there, uh, that should also one, one, not a one, zero there. Okay, so let's go ahead and back solve. We can get that this tells us that C3 must be equal to one. We get that this also tells us that C2 must be equal to 1, and we get that C1 plus C2 plus C3 must be 3. Based on the fact that C3 and C2 are both 1, this implies that C1 is equal to 1. So, in other words, the representation here is we're saying that V, in terms of basis 1, would be the column vector 1, 1, 1. In other words, what we are saying, and you can confirm this, is that we need 1 of each of these polynomials to build this guy. And let's just check that. If I add this to this to this, I would get x squared, x squared, x squared, that's 3x squared. x, negative x, and x, that's x. And 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. So that does seem to make sense that we need one of each of these to build this guy. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing for determining uh, VB2. So the same vector in terms of a different basis. So we'll start this here and then we'll move on to the next page. So to determine VB2, we set up the same equation, but now using the basis two vectors. So we want to use these guys right here. So it looks like we should do, I'll just change the letters. Let's call them K this time. So K1 times X squared plus X, uh, then looks like plus K2 times X plus one plus k3 times, what do we got there? x squared plus one. Okay, and that is supposed to equal that vector three x squared plus x plus one. Three x squared plus x plus one. Okay, so just to make this a little bit cleaner, let's go ahead, grab this stuff, and uh, we can copy that, and then we'll just move on to a new page here. There we go. And let's just widen that a little bit. Okay. There we go. So that looks a little bit nicer. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on trying to do this. So same idea. We can build some equations in terms of x squared. It looks like it should be k1 plus 0k2 plus k3. Uh, it needs to be equal to 3. Then looks like we should get k1 plus k2 plus 0k3 needs to be 1. And then looks like we should get 0k1 plus k2 plus k3 also needs to be 1. And if we put that in an augmented form, looks like we should get 1, 0, 1, 3, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay. Same idea, use our elementary row operation. So let's see R2 and replace it with R2 minus R1. So we should get 1, 0, 1, 3. Uh, looks like we should get 0, 1, negative 1, negative 2, and then 0, 1, 1, 1. And then we can use this guy to clear out this down here. So let's go ahead and do R3 and replace it with R3 minus R2. So that would be 1, 0, 1, 3, 0, 1, minus 1, negative 2. And then it looks like we should get 0, 0, uh, 2, and then 1 plus 2. Looks like it's going to be a 3 there. Okay, um, we could just begin to back solve at this point. Uh, looks like this would tell us that 2k3 needs to be 3. 
So it looks like K3 needs to be 3 halves. Uh, then we could get K2 minus K3 needs to be negative 2. So that would tell us K2 minus 3 halves equals negative 2. And that looks like K2 would be negative 1 half. And then finally, this tells us that K1 plus K3 is supposed to be equal to 3. And that would tell us that K1 plus 3 halves equals 3. So K1 would be 3 halves. So this tells us that this vector V in terms of B2 would be the column vector 3 halves, negative 1 half, 3 halves. So in other words, what we're saying there is if we take 3 halves times this, uh, times minus one half times this plus three halves times this, we will end up getting that. And uh, if we sort of think about that, right, three halves times here, that's gonna give us a three halves uh, x squared, a three halves x squared there is gonna give us a three x, that seems to make sense. If we do a three halves times x here and a minus one half times the x here, that'll give us the x. And if we do a minus one half here and a three halves here, that'll give us the plus one. So this really does give us the constants necessary to build this vector. So there we go. So that's showing you guys how to determine what is called the component vector for a given vector in terms of an ordered basis. Now, this also should probably strengthen to you guys why we call it an ordered basis. Let's just go back to the first one we did here. If for some reason we had decided to order this basis as, you know, say x squared, uh, or sorry, this basis here, the second one, as say x squared plus one and then x squared plus x and x plus one, then that would change the order of these components here, right? Uh, if we change these two then of vectors, then we would also change these two of the components. So the order does matter here. It's not gonna change the values, but it's gonna change which position they're in in terms of the column vector. Okay, so this shows you guys how to build the component vectors for a given basis. What we'd like to do know now, right, is is there a way to sort of change from one basis into another, right? I mean, both of these are fine ways of building everything in P2 of R. So if we have stuff that we know how to represent here, do we know how to transition it into, say, representations in here? And it turns out that that's not particularly hard to do. We actually can do that using some clever matrix operations. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that, and that'll wrap up this section.